everybody, I'm Maggie. We're back on another episode of SRH Access Facebook Live. Today we're excited. We have our Assistant Chief of Staff, Dr. Carl Ratchin. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. We're excited. You know, it's been a while since we've had you on, and it's June, so we're talking everything scoliosis, because it's Scoliosis Awareness Month. So today we're focused on congenital scoliosis. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what that condition is? Sure. So back up just a second. Scoliosis is twisting of the spine. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you can see, and there's lots of things that cause it. Right. Um, and so here's an example of the, and you can see this is the normal spine, uh, where you have these little rectangles that are stacked on top of each other. And then with scoliosis, they become twisted um, for, for whatever reason is causing the scoliosis. Mm -hmm. And so the most common type of scoliosis is idiopathic. Um, and that's usually, we see that seven times more commonly in girls than boys. Um, and usually during their growth spurt. So a lot of middle school girls are, will get, they even get screened at school. And, and so we see a lot of those. Congenital scoliosis, on the other hand, is scoliosis that's a result of the bones not being rectangles. Um, so again, here's an example of bones that are rectangles. And here's an example of, you can see rectangle, 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 rectangle. And then right here in the middle, there's some triangles and they're kind of stuck together. Right. So, so when the bones do not form normally, um, we call that congenital scoliosis. Mm -hmm. and, and some people think because it has that congenital name in it, it like, means that it was there at birth. Right. Um, and it was, but it's often not diagnosed until adolescence when they go through that okay. adolescent growth spurt. So technically when they're born, their spine could be totally normal or straight as that matter? or Well, it would be, it may be very straight, but mm -hmm. the, the, the crookedness of the bones mm -hmm. uh, is oftentimes not visible until they grow a little bit. Mm -hmm. A lot of times um, during RSV season in the fall when the yeah. babies go to the emergency room for and they get a chest x-ray and it's kind of just noted on an incidental, we call it incidental finding on the chest x-ray because right. they go, well, they got pneumonia and also look at those those vertebral bodies are not rectangles mm -hmm. and then that's how congenital scoliosis is diagnosed a lot of times. Wow, okay. And so I guess in terms of the causes that this, I mean, is there any do we know any known cause of why this happens or? There, you know, it is, can be associated with other um, birth defects or, mm -hmm. or th it, you know, something that goes wrong when the baby's uh, in the womb yeah. as an embryo and the cells don't divide normally. And so there are a number of um, kind of groups of disorders that have congenital scoliosis as part of them. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been some, a little bit of work in mice trying to identify what can you expose mice to to get congenital scoliosis, mm -hmm. but there's not a, they're not a hard and fast right. rule of it happens now. We think it's, it's just a, a failure of all of those cells dividing billions and billions and billions of times, uh, usually probably between five and 10 weeks of embryonic life, mm -hmm. um, which is when the spinal cord is dividing and forming. Wow, okay. And then in terms of signs and symptoms, I mean, you mentioned that, I mean, you could kind of just have an accidental, you know, you're getting a chest x-ray and they kind of see something. So what are some of the sign of, signs and symptoms that as a child's growing, a parent can maybe look for? So all, you know, and again, on the, on the signs or symptoms of what the parents notice, yeah. it's really just uh, unevenness of the back. Mm -hmm. um, and we, when we examine the patients, we actually look at them from behind with them bending over. Mm -hmm. And what you see is one side is higher than the other. Right. And that is that twisting of the spine. Mm -hmm. So it's not really bending, it's twisting. And so, and then a lot of times if they're, they're standing up, you may see that one shoulder is higher than the other. Okay. Or it may look like one leg is longer than the mm -hmm. other. Um, and those are things usually, and it's usually noticed by the mother or the primary care physician at the well child check. Um, and then so the school nurses uh, check, and I think they check girls in fifth and seventh grade, boys in eighth grade, or mm -hmm. I should know that. During school, this month. Yeah, yeah. but it is more, <laughs> but it is more common in, in girls, right? You it mentioned. is. Okay, and I mean that sounds like that's when they're growing the most, right. so that's important. So, in terms of um, the diagnosis part of it, so when they come to the hospital and getting some um, some uh, diagnosis scanning, what are some of the options we have? We have the EOS machine, I know, right. which is a really cool technology. Right. So the EOS machine is uh, a type of X-ray mm -hmm. um, that is can be taken in three foot segments. So you can get the entire spine and you can get the entire legs. And it's very, very, very low dose um, compared to what our digital radiography, which is also low dose. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get it in both planes. So you can see in, in really three planes. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see both as if you're looking at the patient's back or front and then if you're looking at them from the side. Okay. And one of the things with all types of scoliosis, but particularly congenital scoliosis, 
we, we looking at that from the side is really mm -hmm. important. Right. Um, with and it's harder for I think most people to see. I mean, mm -hmm. what the parents and the primary care doctor, the teachers notice is one shoulder is higher than the other, or where they bend forward, that they have a little rotation of the scapula, the shoulder blade sticks out of the back. Right. Um, but from the long-term health of your spine, mm -hmm. what's going on in the, what we call the sagittal or the sideways plane is probably more important for your spine health over the course of the next five to seven decades. Wow. So the EOS gives us all that information with you know quickly and with very, very low radiation. And how young, I mean, for kids that are coming in, like are they getting these x-rays or the EOS machine? Right, they have to be able to stand really still for EOS. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, over four for sure, and between two to four probably dep depends on the patient. Okay. Um, and then the regular x-rays, like I said, with, with congenital scoliosis, I bet you half of the patients are, are diagnosed because they had an x-ray taken for something else. They're right. constipated and they do a KUB to mm -hmm. look for constipation and they notice the, the vertebral body's abnormal or they, they they're worried about pneumonia and they get a chest x-ray and they notice it so a, a lot many of our congenital scoliosis patients are really asymptomatic nobody yeah. can see anything and those patients will usually come when they're growing fast we'll see them every four to six months mm -hmm. and then if they're not which is you know growth is a whole lot in the first two years and then it's pretty steady state until they get to the adolescent growth spurt right. and it peaks up again and so when they're growing fast we're going to see them every six months mm -hmm. um, when they're not growing fast we may see them a little less frequently than that other, you ask about imaging, so at mm -hmm. some point, uh, particularly those patients who are progressing, um, who may need treatment mm -hmm. um, uh, with surgery, uh, we may do CT scans and MRI scans, right. which give us, you know, a better, the CTs show us very well what the bone is doing, and the MRI scan tells us what the spinal cord inside the bone is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and since it forms at the same time, about a third of the time, patients with congenital scoliosis will have a problem with the spinal cord. Okay. And you usually pick that up on the MRI scan. About a third of the times they'll have problems with their kidneys, mm -hmm. and about 10% of the time they'll have a cardiac problem. So all those organs that are forming right. embryologically at the same time are, are at risk to find things. And so one of the things we routinely screen, so if it, even a six-month-old baby comes and they were in the emergency room, they notice the vertebra not abnormal, one of the things that we'll do in addition to watching that is we'll send them usually for a renal ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, we may either ultrasound the spine or do MRI scans of the spine, particularly if, if there's any suggestion that neurologically things are, are not 100% right. normal. Wow, okay. So I guess like the last portion of this is really the treatment options. I mean, I know right. that you know there's casting, right. there's bracing, there's surgery, and it, it can be all different depending on the child. Absolutely, and, but in general, with congenital scoliosis, because mm -hmm. the bones are, and here's a, here's a picture of a CT scan, and you can see, um, you can see down here where they're rectangles, and then and then they're not rectangles, and there's this little triangular piece of bone. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what this looks like, and you can see the little triangle right there. Um, if once you've documented that this bone is growing crooked, mm -hmm. and you know the patient's still going to grow, then you know it's going to get worse. Right. Um, a brace is not going to be able to change the shape of that bone, um, so we don't do a lot of bracing or casting in congenital scoliosis. Okay. Rarely, occasionally, you'll have somebody who has a has a congenital curve, and then they develop what we call a compensatory curve below it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes that compensatory curve can take on its own life. And so you may be bracing a compensatory curve above or below a congenital curve, but usually the congenital curves are not going to get braced or cast. So um, if, if the patient is still growing and the curve has gotten worse, then those patients oftentimes are, are treated with surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, it, and whether that surgery is done off in the back of the spine right. um, or from the front and the back kind of depends on the, where the curve is and how old the patient is. Okay. So I'm going to take it back a little bit when we first, you first started talking about scoliosis in general and kind of the different forms we have. So with this congenital, I mean, let's say I'm a parent coming in, I have a child who's growing. So what is really the difference in terms of maybe from like early onset? I mean, early onset is from zero to 10. So is that, right. are they considered in that? Right, that that's area, a really good or? question. So when we say early onset scoliosis, mm -hmm. that really just says they were before the 10, right? So they okay. could have idiopathic, they could have congenital, okay. they could have a neuromuscular curve less mm -hmm. than 10. So okay. really all that does is just say that these are the, and, and the reason we use that early onset uh, um, description mm -hmm. is those are the patients whose lungs are at most risk to be affected by their scoliosis. Okay. And, so, and so when you talk about a treatment of those patients 
who have scoliosis of any kind less than 10, you have to take into consideration the lung development. Mm -hmm. And so early onset just means they're young and their lungs may be at risk. Okay. And, and then within the early onset uh, nomenclature, it can be for any of these other reasons. Okay. And so congenital patients may be early onset, mm -hmm. um, but they may not be diagnosed there until they're 12, right? right? And then, because that's a, it, it was a, it was a 20 or 30 degree curve when they were eight, nobody mm -hmm. ever saw it. And then they hit the adolescent growth spurt and then all of a sudden they have a 30 degree curve and the, the pediatrician is looking at them um, right. and then notices that they have a curve and, and sends them in. Wow, okay, well that's good to know. I mean, I think as parents come in, they're just, they're, their mind is full of so much information. One other thing I wanna to touch on, we have talked about these spines that we get printed by our 3D right. printer. Right. So let me kind of go into that because I think that helps a lot with how you guys analyze the spines in order to know how to treat it. Sure, so again, start with the, the, the normal spine or these blocks and, and this is, made out of styrofoam and commercially available and these are the screws so when we do spine mm -hmm. fusion the skins back here you take the skins and the muscles away and then you take there's a little joint in between each spine mm -hmm. segment you take the joint out you put screws in you hook the screws up to rods and you can use that to, if it's crooked you can use that to straighten it out oh, wow. and then that those screws and rods hold it steady and firm while the bone grows in between the, the segments um, so that's kind of the, what we normally do. And then for comp if you have a complex deformity and you really want to understand exactly what is going on, you can take the CT scan and then they can plug the data from the CT scan into a 3D printer mm -hmm. and actually print a copy of the spine. And it's remarkable. And like we'll take these in the operating room mm -hmm. and for a complex case and drop it into a sterile bag so we can actually look at it. You can see here, you know, some of the times because there's really a half one here and a half one there. Right. So you have to come up with nomenclature to say, how are you gonna, mm -hmm. let's all agree that this is three and this is six and this is eight and this is nine. Right. And, and then this would, and it, it will look in surgery so almost exactly like this. That's and awesome. so it helps you find out where you are and then understand because you're putting those little screws, you know, in the middle mm -hmm. of the spinal, it's the spinal cord, right? Mm -hmm. And so you've gotta, and then coming out at each level is a little nerve root. And so you need to kind of figure out a way to make sure that you get all those screws in place so you don't damage the, right. the neural structures. And so this is just one of those things that can help with both planning and, and kind of knowing exactly where you are when you're in the operating room. That's great, a nice little map to go by. Cool, well thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, you all have a great week. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Happy Scoliosis Awareness Month. Definitely. <laughs>